Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on the bright side. Helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed finally to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, we welcome your phone calls here on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or the longevity business, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in our second segment. We've got a guest coming up uh, in our fourth segment. Kaylin Diggs will, talk to, will be talking to us about his... Uh, about his book. Kalen is a friend of mine. I met him, uh, I don't know, a couple years back. Came to some of my talks and he motivated to write a book about health. And I thought that was really cool. And we'll talk to him. Uh, we'll talk to Kalen about his book here in our fourth segment. So we'll take your calls here in our second and third segment. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with thinning skin or fine lines or crow's feet, if you have acne blemishes, or if you just want a general skin tonic, you want our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Use it once or twice a week. It'll give you a nice little flake or a nice little peel. Although after you've been using it for a little bit, you won't peel as much. And uh, vitamin A, of course, retinol, as we've talked about so many times on this program, is super important for driving the production of connective tissue, driving the production of collagen, driving the production of moisture factors. And our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is also made with a whole bunch of fat-soluble premium vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, silicones, oils, waxes, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my truth treatment formulations. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are still talking about connective tissue, and specifically heart disease and connective tissue, the real cause of heart disease, the real cause of cardiovascular illness, which is most certainly not high cholesterol. Again, the cause of heart disease is not elevated blood cholesterol. This is stupid biochemistry, period. I know I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I just want to be very clear about that. There is high cholesterol. Obviously, uh, there are cholesterol plaques, I should say, if you have stenosis or sclerosis in the heart, but the cholesterol is not the cause of the heart disease. This is dumb medicine. The real cause of heart disease, as we've been talking about for the last few weeks, is the same as the real cause of any degenerative issues, of any chronic degenerative diseases. The key, uh, the key word to understand is degeneration. Degenerative. The body's a regenerating system. When we have a degenerative disease, something's gone wrong. We're not regenerating, we're degenerating. We're breaking down. That's the cause of heart disease. That's the cause of all disease. Degeneration, not cholesterol. Degeneration. And that means, this is so powerful, that means that for prevention, for reversal, for healing, we don't need a medical model. We don't need medicine. It's not a medical concern. It's none of the doctor's business. It has nothing to do with the doctor. 
The real cause of disease is degeneration. This is not medical, not medical, not medical, not medical. The real cause of heart disease, the real cause of any chronic disease is deterioration of the tissues and there's nothing the medical model can do to prevent that. There's nothing a drug can do to uh, correct deterioration of tissues. The deterioration of the tissues follows malnourishment, a lack of nutrients, deficiencies in oxygen, and toxicity. That's from a physical level. You can throw in emotional and mental strategies or mental, I should say, emotional and mental causes and emotional and spiritual causes for that matter. You may have some mechanical trauma ultimately. Yes, that's true. And at that point, there may be some doctoring that's required. Once the mechanical trauma kicks in, yes, I understand there may be some surgical procedures or doctoring that may be required. But up until then, heart health, like the health of any other part of the body, is about the lifestyle choices we make. And you guys, that is powerful, powerful information. If you understand that, now we have control back over our health. If we understand the lifestyle choices we make, the foods we eat or don't eat, the supplements we take, the exercise we do, the rest we get, and uh, the amount of oxygen that gets into our system through correct respiration. That's what health is about. That is so powerful because it frees us from the hegemony, the tyranny of the medical model that says, we can fix you, we're gonna fix you. You gotta come to us, we're gonna take care of you. That's where statin drugs come in. That's why we think it's okay to use statin drugs. I'm telling you, as a pharmacist, it never made sense to me how anybody could possibly dispense a prescription drug in the name of good health, how anybody could take a prescription drug in the name of good health. And this is, this is true about all drugs, and it's true about statin drugs also. And I know statin drugs are not as powerful or not as toxic as others, but nonetheless, heart health and statin drugs have as much in, uh, in common with each other as a fish does with a bicycle. That is to say nothing. The bottom line, as always, with medication is you cannot drug your way to health. You cannot be better by taking a prescription drug. Now, you may get some side effects. You, you, you may uh, mitigate or reduce the, the, um, the impact of side effects, yes, or of, of, of pain, the side effects of disease, pain especially. And I'm, I'm a big believer in having some pain pills in the medicine cabinet, absolutely. I'm not Pollyannish about drugs. I understand there is a need for certain drugs. It's the chronic long-term drugs like statin drugs that you're going to be on for the rest of your life. Those are the problems, even though they're not as toxic as other ones. They're still, they're still not great drugs, by the way. There's still a, a nasty side effect profile associated with, uh, with, uh, with statin drugs, as anybody who's taken them understands. If you're on a statin drug, you know that you don't feel as good. You know probably that you've got, uh, uh, you may have some muscle weakness. You may have some problems with memory. It can't help but affect these kinds of processes. Even if it's not as toxic as most, in the long term, statin drugs, because of their, uh, their ability to suppress this vital, vital, vital compound cholesterol, they cannot come without some kind of side effect, even if you don't notice it. Ironically, while statin inhibition of cholesterol, which is super multifunctional and responsible for all numerous aspects of biology and biochemistry, ironically, while statin drugs can create side effects, lots of side effects, even if you don't notice them, there are going to be some kind of effects in the body that can't help but be. Ironically, the medical model is, going to, is starting to suggest that because of this multifunctionality of cholesterol, we can use statin drugs for lots of things. This is, this is the latest thing. It doesn't, it doesn't come from doctors necessarily, but it comes from the drug companies who are selling the statin drugs. Now they want to use uh, uh, the statin drugs for, uh, for anti-inflammatories. They want to use the statin drugs to, to prevent or to reduce the, side, the effects of inflammatory disease. There's even talk that the statin drugs can be used to reduce cancer mortality. And because cholesterol is required for blood clotting, there are some medical researchers working for drug companies who are suggesting that you can use statin drugs to thin the blood. And all of this has to do with the multiple benefits, the multiple properties, biological properties, the multiple biological effects of cholesterol. I, that is, by suppressing cholesterol production, you can affect all these other systems in the body. Not a good idea. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am 
Brown Pharmacist, Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here uh, in this segment and in our next segment. Fourth quarter, we've got Kaylin Diggs, author of Reaching the Finish Line. I met Kaylin uh, a couple years ago. Uh, and he motivated to write a book about health, and I think that's really awesome. And we'll be talking to Kalen about uh, about his book in our fourth segment. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll get your calls here this segment and next. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, my truth skin health products, uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. If you've uh, if you've experienced any benefits from our cannabinoid product or CBD product, um, Pure Hemp Technologies CBD product, up at BrightSideHealth.com. Where, where you will find bone broth protein, which, by the way, is a great source of heart-friendly amino acids. Bone broth, in general, is just a wonderful source of these kinds of amino acids, which is what we really need if we're dealing with cardiovascular disease, if we're dealing with connective tissue disease, and they do go hand in hand. It's not about lowering cholesterol. It's not about a statin drug. You cannot drug your way to health, period. And even though uh, statin drugs are less toxic than others, they still have a side effect profile. Go to, uh, just Google, the, or, or if you're on a statin drug, just ask the pharmacist for what's called the package insert. The package insert for uh, Zocor, which is one of the best-selling statin drugs, the package insert will advise you that adverse reactions reported from Zocor include edema and swelling, abdominal pain, atrial fibrillation, constipation, gastritis, diabetes. That's a good one. How do you like that? You take your statin drug and you become a diabetic. That's a good thing, right? Myalgia, which means muscle pain, headaches, insomnia, vertigo, bronchitis, sinusitis, eczema, infections, including uh, urinary tract infections. These are all adverse reactions that are reported from taking Zocar. And by the way, when you get an adverse reaction, it's not like it's an on-off switch. It gradually develops. So just because you don't notice that you got a heart problem or you don't notice you have a digestive problem or you don't notice that you're having a muscle problem or a central nervous system problem like headaches, just because you don't notice it doesn't mean you're not on the way to getting them. It doesn't mean that the body's not beginning to suffer from the effects of the adverse reaction, suffer from the effects that will lead to the adverse reaction, even if you don't notice it. You can't get better from a drug. You can only get worse. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. That is so powerful. You can't get better from a drug. You can only get worse. How this became a go-to strategy for healing the body is just beyond me, although it probably has something to do with our ignorance of how the human body worked two, three, four hundred years ago when the drug theory was first developed. The drug theory was first developed in the 1500s. A guy named Paracelsus was one of the first guys to develop this idea that you could modify biochemistry with drugs. Back then it was plants, but still, nonetheless, it's drugs. Connective tissue, which is what we're talking about here, connective tissue building, on the other hand, is a powerful strategy for protecting the heart. Connective tissue building is a powerful strategy for preventing heart disease. Connective tissue building is a powerful strategy for anti-aging. It's a powerful strategy for health. Connective tissue building, unlike uh, pharmacotherapy, builds the body, helps the body regenerate. It doesn't make the body work harder, which is what a drug does. It makes the body work less on many fronts. Glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, collagen, gelatin, all of these have natural, non-toxic, heart health, blood health properties, especially when it comes to improving the flow of blood. In, in fact, these substances improve the flow of water. It turns out that these kinds of substances actually have an ability to, to structure water. I'll talk about structured water here in a little bit. Structured water is powerful stuff when it comes to healing and when it comes to cardiovascular health. And you can use these substances to promote the formation of structured water polysaccharides, complex sugars, that is, that are found in algae, found in uh, longevity products like the Fucoid Z, which is one of the all-time great longevity products. 
And by the way, doctors will actually tell you not to use glucosamine, not to use fucoidin, not to use polysaccharides because of their blood thinning effects when you're on Coumadin or Warfarin or Pradaxa. They're afraid you might thin the blood too much. Well, it seems to me like if you're concerned that glucosamine is going to thin the blood and maybe thin your blood too much if you're on Coumadin, maybe you should just reduce the dose of your Coumadin. Maybe you should just not even use the Coumadin and use glucosamine instead. Seems more logical to me, especially considering the toxic profile of these artificial blood thinning drugs. There's a drug called heparin, which is a standard blood thinner that you will get after you have surgery. Heparin is used to keep the blood circulating. After you have surgery, your blood will clot. Why? Because a surgical procedure represents a major, major, major trauma and emergency to the body. There's no benign surgeries. People drop dead in surgery all the time. People die in surgery all the time. It's just one of the risks of surgery, even something just that could be a mild surgery. It could be something like just having a, your gallbladder taken out. There's no, there's, there's really no mild surgeries. In any case, after a surgical procedure, your blood tends to clot, they give you heparin. What do you think heparin is? Heparin's a polysaccharide. Heparin is very similar, it's like glucosamine. Heparin is, a, is a, a, a different form of glucosamine, similar to glucosamine. It's all in the same chemical family. Same with hyaluronic acid. It's all part of the same chemical family. They all help thin the blood. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heparin doesn't just thin the blood, it's also an anti-inflammatory. Reading from the textbook of biochemistry, heparin is an anticoagulant, that is a blood thinner, that prevents excessive fiber formation during inflammatory and allergic reactions. In other words, heparin is not just a blood thinner, it's a blood anti-inflammatory. And remember, heparin is similar to glucosamine. They're not just blood thinners, they're blood anti-inflammatories. The connective tissue is, or the blood is connective tissue. Doctors are mystified. The medical model cannot understand why connective tissue disease is linked to heart disease. Well, first of all, the blood is connective tissue. Second of all, the heart is hanging on a, f a framework, a scaffolding of connective tissue. Connective tissue, when we talk about dirty blood, which is really the underlying cause of disease, is dirty blood or toxemia, as it's been called. Dirty blood is a connective tissue problem because the blood is connective tissue. It's inflamed, clogged connective tissue, the connective tissue called the blood. This is so important, you guys, because it puts the control of our health back into our life, into our lives, into our lifestyle. We now have control over our health when we understand that our diseases are about what's uh, about our tissues, about how our tissues are responding or not responding to the ups and downs, the stresses of life. There is a fascinating relationship, by the way, between substances like collagen and glucosamine and hyaluronic acid and algaes and polysaccharides and something called chitin or chitosan. Chitin is a substance that's found in insect shells and crustacean shells. Chitosan is a, is a tweaked version of chitin. And these substances are very similar, natural substances are very similar to uh, glucosamine and to all of these other uh, uh, proteoglycans, protein sugar complexes that we've been talking about. And they also, interestingly, are involved in the movement and the flow of fluids and water. Yes, chitin, chitosan, glucosamine, collagen, gelatin, hyaluronic acid, all of these are not only important for keeping uh, blood thin and ha they don't have anti-inflammatory properties, they're also important for the movement and the structuring of water. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got, uh, got no calls, so we will. Got lots here I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about coenzyme Q10 tomorrow. Coenzyme Q10 is a, 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 derived from the same, per, the same biochemical process that cholesterol is derived from. So suppression of uh, a cholesterol production by statin drugs will also suppress your levels of coenzyme Q10, which is super duper important, not just for the heart, although it's, there's, more, there's almost twice as much coenzyme Q10 found in the heart as there is in the kidney, which actually is the second important organ that's uh, 
for coenzyme Q10. All cells depend on coenzyme Q10 for energy. So coenzyme Q10 is going to help various parts of the body. Suppression of co uh, statin drugs are, are notorious for suppressing coenzyme Q10 levels. We will talk about that uh, tomorrow on the Bright Side. This is from the Journal of... Uh, uh, science and translational medicine, anticoagulants, that is blood thinners to reduce stroke, risk may increase incidence of heart attacks. How do you like that? Medical researchers at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich have discovered a new class of anticoagulants designed to reduce the risk of strokes can increase the risks of heart attacks. Again, going to show you, you cannot take a drug and not expect to get uh, toxicity or side effects. If you want to thin your blood, there's lots of ways to thin the blood. For one thing, use glucosamine. Glucosamine and collagen and hyaluronic acid thin the blood by various mechanisms, but one of the ways they do it is by structuring water. This is so fascinating. There's actually a fourth type of water. Most uh, from high school biology, you may remember, or high school chemistry, you may remember that there's three phases of water. There is uh, water that's in ice, there's water that's in liquid, there's water that's in steam. Well, it turns out there's a fourth phase of water. And that fourth phase of water is known as colloidal water or crystal water, or more technically, as structured water. Dr. Gerald Pollack has written numerous books on this. We've got a bunch of YouTube videos on it. It turns out that structured water has a proper, has a healing property. Structured water, or water is structured inside of blood vessels. The blood that flows through blood vessels is structured by the lining of the vessel. This gives the water a natural healing property. As I should say the blood a natural healing property, but it has to flow. That's the important part of the blood. It must be in motion. It must flow. As we get older, that blood, our blood starts to sludge up. That's what dirty blood is really all about. It's blood that's sludging up. Using gelatin, using hyaluronic acid, using your glucogel caps, using your Fucoid Z, eating algaes and seaweeds, increasing the, uh, the polysaccharide content of your foods by eating uh, vegetables. All of these have wonderful blood thinning properties. And by thinning the blood and facilitating the movement of blood through vessels, you accelerate healing, especially healing of the vessels. And remember, the whole problem is beginning begins because of deterioration of the vessels. This makes glucosamine and uh, glucosamine like substance is very important for protecting the heart. Extremely important anti-heart disease when it comes to anti-heart disease nutrition. Again, glucosamine, collagen, bone broth protein, cartilage from bone soup, hyaluronic acid, and it all depends, by the way, on vitamin C. Vitamin C is, uh, this is why vitamin C may be so important for the heart. Vitamin C is the rate limiting step in, in the building of connective tissue in the repair of connective tissue. The combination of vitamin C and all of these blood flow improving substances is how you want to protect your heart, among other nutritional strategies, which we will uh, continue talking about here in the coming days. All right, got Kaylin Diggs coming up here uh, in our third segment, so we'll take your calls here this segment. I want to talk to you about this one interesting study I got out, uh, I found today. Journal, this is from the Journal of Neuroscience. Rhythm of breathing affects memory and fear. Where have you heard this before? Northwestern medicine scientists have discovered for the first time that the rhythm of breathing creates electrical activity in the human brain that enhances emotional judgments and memory recall. Well, if these scientists have discovered this for the first time, they haven't been listening to the bright side because we've been talking about it for years. How you breathe plays a major role in how you think. How you breathe plays a major role in how you feel. How you th uh, breathe plays a major role in how your body shows up. And when I say how you breathe, I'm talking about the rhythm of the breathing. You know, if you breathe with the wrong rhythm, you can mess things up. It turns out that if you breathe with the wrong rhythm, you may actually uh, uh, kick, uh, activate the fear, re fear response, the anxiety response. According to uh, Dr. Zolano, I'm not sure where Dr. Zolano is from. Where's Dr. Zolano? Christina Zolano, assistant professor of neurology at Northwestern. She says rapid breathing may confer an advantage when someone is in a dangerous situation. Yes, it does. Rapid breathing can actually wake you up. Rapid shallow breathing activates cortisol, it activates adrenaline. The adrenal glands become uh, wake up when we breathe shallow and rapid. That could be a good thing. 
If you're, if you're driving and you're falling asleep, rapid breathing can be a, a quick way to wake you up. If you uh, wake up first thing in the morning groggy, same thing. Wake up from a nap groggy. Rapid breathing can wake you up. You just don't want to do it a long, for a long time because you don't want these activated stress hormones. You don't want to, have, you don't want to activate stress hormones chronically. All right, 844 Got Kim on the line from Michigan. Good morning, Kim. What's going on? Ben, 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 we love you so much. Thank you oh, so much for all you. you've done for me and my family. And um, oh. we met you at the Indy um, event that they had there, and you have helped me. Um, my husband is Dave in the Thumb. Oh, okay. Nice. Yes, and I just want to tell you, you know, everything that you have done and said and you say over and over, um, <sighs> to really listen to you because you really hit it right on the head. Thank and, you. Um, That's awesome, Kim. Been Thank you so on much. My issues, you know, for a few years now, and you know, sometimes we kind of get lax, and um, you know, we know what we're supposed to do. Sure. And we kind of, you know, I refer to it kind of like a cutter. You know, like cutters, people can hurt their feelings. They can do things to us, but you know what a cutter does? They hurt themselves. Do it themselves. Yes. You're talking about people who cut themselves. And, and I, yeah. you know, I do it, you know, a little stress in our lives, whatever. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I know that a piece of pie is going to, you know, mess with me. Yeah. And, and I know, you know. Um, but at least you know, at least you know the impact that your behaviors have. That's powerful. You can do whatever you want after that. But as long as you know that your lifestyle choices have an impact on how your health shows up. That's powerful, Kim. Whether you do it or not, that's still powerful. And I just, I just wanted to thank you today. I appreciate for all that. that you do. I love you so much. You thank and, you. you know, all the other Th people with longevity that have helped our lives so much. And, thank um, you. Thank you. That's I really, awesome. I really appreciate what you do. And, and God you bless really you. go above and beyond. And I thank you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Say hi to Dave. Thank you, Kim. I really all right. will. Okay, okay, take care. Oh, that was really sweet. That was super sweet. All right. And that's what we do at Longevity, by the way. Longevity is not just a business to sell nutritional supplements. It's a business to change lives. If you are interested by, in any of these ideas that we're talking about, about health, about how we can change our lives, how we can change the lives of our friends and family members, and you want to make money, I really recommend that you look into Longevity. Just call 866-735-2470 and ask questions. If you are business-minded, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you're not, check out the products. Check out the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you want to just try one product, try the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you're like 99% of people, you're going to notice results, and they'll, they'll happen pretty quickly. All right, we got Kayla Diggs coming up in our next segment. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben uh, and uh, benfuchsarchives.com. You can check out all the longevity products at benfuchsarchives.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com. And if you want to take a look at our bone broth protein and Pure Hemp Technologies cannabinoid products, you can head over to brightsidehealth.com. And for our skin health products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. I'm very honored and happy to invite to our uh, to the bright side our next guest Callan Diggs who is the author of a book called Reaching the Finish Line. I met Callan I don't know, five years ago, maybe, uh, at an event in Texas, and I was very impressed by his youthful ambition and how he motivated to do what he said he was going to do. He said he was going to write a book, and he did it. It's called Reaching the Finish Line, interestingly enough, and we're going to talk to Callan about what, that, what exactly that means and what Callan's take on good health and wellness is. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Callan Diggs. Hey, Callan. Hey, Ben. Thank you for having me. Good to talk to you, buddy. After after all of these years, you had me on your show uh, about a month ago, and uh, welcome to the bright side. So, what? Tell yeah, me. Uh, to be on. Thank you, Callan. So, what exactly is the finish line? What does that mean? Reaching the finish line. For sure. So, you know, the finish line is different for everyone. And you know, I wrote the book specifically, kind of with a self-help and financial kind of. Uh, 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 to catch it. And a lot of people simply do not reach the finish line because they 
they have a lot of things that, that's preventing them from doing so. So perhaps maybe they want to have a very successful business, or maybe they want to be an executive for maybe a Fortune 500 company, or perhaps maybe they want to uh, be able to become a better person so they become a, a better father uh, to their family and a better friend to someone. So the, re so the finish line is there for everyone, but I want to help people to get there, and that's what mm -hmm. inspired me to write the book. What keeps people, in your opinion, in your experience, what, keep, what keeps people from reaching the finish line? For sure. So one thing often I say is a person's peer group. So you hear the adage that birds with the same feather flock together, and oftentimes a lot of people, they have these negative influences that are preventing them from reaching the finish line. You know, if you have friends that are, or family that are disempowering, well, that's not going to mm. help you uh, towards your end goal. Another thing is uh, people, they lack discipline. Really, uh, if, a, if a person is lazy, if they lack the work ethic, then it's going to be hard to be able uh, to reach the finish line. And what it really takes is you have to really have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with yourself and ask yourself, how bad do you really want it? You can't just talk it. You know, it has to be dictated by your actions. So here, you know, use the word discipline, and I hate that word, by the way, and I have no discipline, but what exactly do you do if, you know, everybody knows you're supposed to have discipline, but what do you do if you don't have discipline, but you still want to reach the finish line? Can you talk yourself into having discipline? That's a great question. Now, there's, you can definitely have an accountability partner. That's, that's one way. Another way is uh, there are sites like stick.com and where, for example, you'll, you'll set a goal. You'll say, you know, I'm going to uh, follow my artists of corporation. I'm going to start a business, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to you know uh, have a social media account and those factors. And if I don't do that by next month, then I'll give two hundred dollars to a cause that I don't like or I don't approve of. So I mean, there's different ways. You to, can force your motivate yourself to, like to with find accountability. You can either have someone in your life to hold you accountable, or uh -huh. if you don't. No, if you don't think anyone will hold you accountable, you can definitely uh, resort to a resource like stick.com. What is, what, can, is stick doc, what is stick what is stick.com exactly? Great. So yeah, stick.com is you set this goal. Okay, so it could be any goal you want. But basically what it is is you, you're, you're putting money where your mouth is. Okay, so uh, mm. if, 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 if you don't follow through on your goal, that money goes to a cause or Got a person it. that you don't like. <laughs> Got it. Stick, stick.com, like stick to your project kind of thing. Yeah, so S-T-I-S-X-X.com. Say it one more time, Kalen. Uh, stick.com, S-T-I-X-X.com. S-T-I-X-X.com. Okay, that's kind of interesting. All right, so why a book? I mean, it, what, was, what was the goal with the book? Did you just want to get your ideas down? Did you have your, you want to share your ideas? You want to make money? What's the deal? Not everybody motivated. Oh, not, sure, lots yeah. of people I have mean, ideas. I mean, I mean now it's, yeah. Yeah, nowadays, uh, you know, if a person thinking that, you know, if they want to write a book to make millions of dollars, uh, it's, it's nothing more than it's just a fallacy. I wrote the book because uh, people, you know, I, you know, I've, I've done this prior uh, to writing a book and, and some of my work experiences as a, as, a, as a career consultant, and a lot of people asking me the same question over and over again. So I thought, well, to just just to, just to start off this, it would just be better to take experiences, write it in a book, so it can serve as a comprehensive resource for everyone who wants access to it. Callan, are you on a cell phone, buddy? I, I'm, you're cutting in and out there. I don't know if you're in a bad place, but st just stick, stay still. We only got a couple more minutes here. What was your okay. when you were uh, when you were writing the book? What was your what was what was your finish line goal aside from obviously the book? But did you have finish line goals yourself? Oh, for sure, for sure, and, and that's a great question, Ben. Uh, and often, in the way I, way out my goals was on path or fail model, which is often one of the, was the worst way to set goals because you're setting yourself up to fail. So uh, I create who else can learn to find the book to the finish line. It's called the 3M metric, and it's basically you're setting parallel goals. So it's like you're setting yourself up to win. An example, um, let's take weight loss, you know, as, as it's quite relevant for your show. Uh, if a person, let's say, let's, so on a pass or fail model, a person may say, I want to lose 30 pounds next month. And if they lose 30 pounds next month, they pass. And if they don't, they fail. Mm. And oftentimes, a lot of people, unfortunately, they fail. And, and when they constantly set goals on a passive fail model repetitively, they often set themselves up for failure. They get depressed, and they mm -hmm. don't want to set goals anymore. 
Mm-hmm. So I tell people, well, let's, you know, set yourself up to win. So for, let's take that same weight loss example. So the metric is minimum, moderate, and max. Absolutely what you believe you can achieve. The moderate is a realistic goal that you can believe you can achieve. And a maximum goal would be if you achieve that goal, it would surprise you. So if we took that same example is that person would say, well, I want to lose 30 pounds in three months. That will be their minimum goal. Or a person may say, I want to lose 30 pounds in two months, and that will be their moderate goal. Or they may say, my maximum goal is I want to lose 30 pounds in one month. Now, Ben, all you have to do is achieve one of those metrics. Yeah. And, that's, and, and, and as long as you do that, that sets that set themselves up for success. So in other words, if you just achieve three pounds, you're successful, whereas the other way with your pass-fail model, that would have been a failure, and you would have been depressed, and you wouldn't even want to try again. That's a great yeah, idea, exactly. actually. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't recommend a pass-fail model. But, what, what, uh, what did you call it, the 3M model? The, three, the 3M model? The 3M metric. I like the that, the 3M metric. All right, cool. So they're actually the bottom line here, what I'm hearing you say, Kalen, uh, Kalen is that uh, having goals and setting goals and achieving goals is not something you do randomly, that there's kind of a system, there's a strategy for how to achieve a goal effectively, correct? For sure. They should systematize it if they want to be successful. And that's what the book is about, the strategies for, goal, for achieving goals. Absolutely. And it also has some ideas on how people, uh, they can uh, transform and, uh, you know, change careers and have some more successful uh, in their career and whatever that is. All right. So the book is uh, called Reaching the Finish Line. How do people get it? For sure. They can go to uh, reachingthefinishline.com. Uh, the book is on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo and all that. But what I'll do for your listeners, Ben, if they go to reachingthefinishline.com and buy the book, not only will I give them the book, but they will also get a free uh, one-month description to my uh, a free one-month premium radio subscription. All you have to do is once they once they check out to my website, just say that they heard uh, the episode, they heard the interview on the bright side, and I'll make sure they get the free one-month premium radio subscription. At How do people finishline.com? How do people get the radio show if they want to just get the radio show? For sure, they will also get that at reaching. TheFinishLine.com. Just reaching the finish line.com. And do you do For any sure. personal stuff? Do you do any personal coaching or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. I have products and services there. I have uh, I have blog posts. I have my products and services there. And uh, yeah, and it's also a community and where you know you know I'm happy to connect with everyone. And so I'll um, be happy to connect with people at reachingthefinishline.com. Reachingthefinishline.com. Callan Dix. Hey, Callan. Thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Ben, thank you, for, thank you for having me. Much appreciated. All right, take care, man. We'll talk again soon. That's Callan Diggs, reachingthefinishline.com, strategies for achieving goals. That's what we're about here on the bright side. We want to make you better. We want you. We want to up your game on all, in all manners, not just in uh, not just in terms of health and nutrition, but in life. That's why we call this program the Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. <laughs>